So, how do you spin your board forward? I mean, you can't bend your knee forward, can you? Ouch. Unlike backside shove it, where you can actually bend your knee, you can't bend your knee to spin your board in frontside shove it, and no leap backside shove it. This time, we will try to find a way to spin our boards without swinging our legs. You are watching Why the Trek and today we are going to study a trick scientifically. Just like I said in the previous video, I personally think no leap backside shove it are one of the easiest tricks in skateboarding. Plus, it is the kind of trick that consumes the least amount of energy, thanks to the law of inertia. In no leap backside shove it, as you push down the nose, the front wheels turn sideways. Then, they can no longer move forward and cause friction against the ground. At the same time though, since the center of gravity of the board tries to maintain its original movement, the board spins by itself. Now the question is, how do we rotate the board when our legs don't bend forward? To do this we have two options. Option number one, kicking out the front foot when you pop, like when you kick a soccer ball. And option number two, jumping up with your weight on the heel side. By shifting weight on the heel side and applying force downward, you'd naturally be pushing your board forward. Both of them allow us to spin our boards forward. Let's compare what these options are good at using this table. Starting from the strength of horizontal push. Instinctively thinking, isn't the first option more natural when you want to move an object forward? But think about it, does it really need so much energy to spin a skateboard? All we need instead is a little bit of a nudge on the nose so that we can utilize the law of inertia. So while option number one may generate strong momentum, we don't need it in the first place. And the same thing can be said in tricks that comes with more rotations. As for option number two however, although it does generate much smaller amount of horizontal energy, it is enough to spin a board. Moving on to the next item, ease of staying above the board. Regardless of the way you do it, when you apply force forward, since the center of gravity of your board goes behind relative to the fulcrum, your board lands behind you. And if you simply kick forward, you can't land back on your board with your weight at the same place. Whereas in option number two, you'd be shifting weight over the place where your board will be. So by simply pushing down your board, you can both spin your board forward, and stay above it. And lastly, ease of jumping up. No matter how low your shove it is, you have to lift up your body while your board spins. While option number one would probably not generate any downward momentum to bring your weight upward, option number two allows you to both spin your board forward and jump upward. Due to these reasons, Option number two is much more suitable in no leap backside shove it. Let's summarize how to do this trick. When you approach, make sure to keep your body axis straight upward all the time. If you lean backward, you may jump too far backward or lose your balance. And when you're ready, try to bend down slightly to the heel side. This tiniest difference between the center of gravity of your body and your board will become bigger as you pop and allow you to spin your board much more effectively. And after that, all it takes is to jump upward. You don't even have to think about spinning your board. If your weight is properly distributed to the heel side, it happens naturally. And you might have realized, it seems like I'm sending my back foot in the other direction, but this is just a byproduct of sending my front foot forward and I'm not intentionally using my back foot. And that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.